We are going to be hopping in game four, round number one between Team X9 and OG. Everybody watching at home, feel free to get your predictions in the chat as well. And we are under waitings. Absolutely. So it looks like uh, we did have a full spawn here with Blood with the SMG, but he's uh, seemed to have just played a little bit more reserved. It looks like they're going to try to uh, work the site a little bit slower like I anticipated. I expect a quick start because I know these guys like to try and get that pick early doors to try to make sure that they're going to get that first frag, but nothing has happened so far. It looks like uh, X9 and OG have really have set themselves up just to be patient and to wait to see what then happens with this one. Oh, and frag, first frag, yeah, comes through from Uzumam, picking up blood. That's going to give the man advantage over to Team OG. Oh, and Climax gets activated as well. Acronym does well to respond with one of his own, but OG are in a great spot going into the mid round. It's just Pan, Zynga, and Acronym left. Oh, what a shot there from Acronym. He's going to take a Climax out down from Top Ruins, and that's now made it a three versus three with plenty going on towards the A side of Azuma, getting himself a kill there on to Ban. As Acronym's going to do his best to try and shut someone down towards that red container area as a bomb fake does also get tickled but doesn't officially go down. The shot's raining in towards A-Sai as Azuma having the round here with three kills already but Akron on to Fantasy. He is making some damage towards top A now but it's still two versus one with it all to do. And Azuma, big, big round to start us off there. He's got himself four frags to the good and that is 1-0 to OG. It is indeed, and it was a close one. OG definitely uh, made it difficult for themselves as we got into the mid round. Good stuff from Zynga and Acronym to bring that one back. If I think if they've gotten the bomb down, it could have been a different ordeal. But for now, it will be the first round of the night going over the Team OG. And this is a much more aggressive start from both teams here. Look at the aggression from Team OG. Supman is going to chime in and get a kill of his own, leaving just Blood and Katye with a very big job to do on the attacking side. And... It seems like we're only a few seconds into the round. Absolutely. They have got a balance pass on their hand already, particularly when there is bullets raining in from everywhere as blood is heavily hit. Catch it, just trying to see if he can find that picking towards top ruins, but everybody's staying nice and tight. I think they've heard, um, Catchy has heard that one who's going to be coming in towards lower ruins, but occupied but blood does get the kill there onto fan fantasy. The bomb has got to be collected from Elbend and uh, two versus three now. Yeah, round starts to slow down a little bit, and just as I say it, River in the perfect position to take out Katye. Very, very nice kill, and now Blood is in a very difficult situation here. Uzuma, River, and Climax all still alive, and he's got very limited information as to where these last three players are. He's going to creep his way towards the A bomb site. SMG in hand. He's also retrieved the AK, but Uzuma's there, and he's got his number. That's a second round for OG. Fantastic. And do you know what? And it's, it's those little off angles that you don't expect someone to be, which is going to be the difference maker. And I tell you what, looking at the school so far, Zuma has had a fantastic start to this game. Let's have a little look to see what he is doing. Um, I think he's working. Uh, oh, actually, sorry. He's got down to Akronim early doors or something. It doesn't take down Catchy, but blood onto River. So all of a sudden, this is looking more like an X9 round for now. But there's still one player who's currently in on towards a site. He does get down there from Blood as Climax goes down to Acronym as well. And it's all down to something with four to find. One versus four. Explosives planted. Bomb has just now been planted. Oh, does well to find the first kill. And he spotted out another, but position has been revealed. And I think Sutman may be stuck around for a little bit too long there. That's a good response from X9. They're going to put their first round on the board. And so far, Tiggs, I know we're only a couple of rounds in, but it seems like X9 are really preferring... Uh, preferential towards this A bomb site. Oh, Acronym's going towards front A. He's going in. He's going top A nice and early. He's going to see if he can get himself that early pick. But unfortunately, OG are not going to be showing their cards too early. He's got himself in there in a good position for Pan. Finding the grenade kill onto Azuma. That's one of the A threats taken down and the most prominent person in towards A who now can't do any damage to them as the bomb sticks in towards Elbent. Hit from Climax is not going to land. X9 still up a man, but oh, that's a big response. Scope versus scope, and Climax is going to win it out this time, bringing it back towards OG's favor, but they've still got quite a bit to do. Bomb has not been planted yet, but the hold from OG is strong, and Sutman taking out blood through the wall. That's a big pick to find. That's going to relieve a lot of the pressure towards the B side of the map. And now OG are back in the driver's seat of this round. Sutman also finds another kill. Climax gets a second for the round, and now Pan has left 
just all alone. 40 seconds left. They've still got time, but they're in a 1v4, Tiggs. I'm not sure if they're going to be up for this one. This is going to be a tough round as he's got himself flashed in towards Bricks there as he gets a tag, but no frag. But as soon as you're pinned in on that area, I know OG are going to come swarming in for you. And that's, a, and that's another clean round, 3-1. Um, Let's have a little look here. I think it'll be worth following Acronym just on this one as he's got a bit more of a, an advanced position, as we say. It looks like Catch is going to be one to open us up as Blood does. He wants to fantasy as well. X9, the SMG's running wild. Three kills already. It's all in Azuma and River's hands. And it looks like there's still plenty to do. But Pan getting himself his second frag of the round onto River with it all down to Azuma, who I can assume is close to A. And goes down. That there is a fantastic is. round there from Pan. That's three kills and three to the door. X9 on giving this up early. Yeah, just taking a quick look at the scoreboard as well. Acronym with five kills under his belt and blood. Not far behind Pan there with four of their own. They've been firing on all cylinders and they're the reason why Team X9 has two rounds so far. They're going to be looking to build up that momentum early on. Just like we said, Tiggs, before the match started, we needed to see Team OG get off to a strong start. They did. But on the other side, X9 are starting to creep their way back into this one. It certainly does look that way. As X9 are already three kills for the good. And it just seems that OG just can't keep themselves up at the moment. And Climax misses two shots there onto Akronin with the M4. Ooh, picks himself up the third. 3-3 free, free and uh, game on, Cardinal. Game on indeed. Yeah, I definitely agree with that one. X9 have kicked it into sixth gear in the last couple of rounds and now Team OG are struggling to find a response to this aggression on the A site. It's all off the back of Pan and Acronym just getting in the faces of Team OG and now they're going to switch it up again. Pan is going to head towards the B side of the map. It's a much more default position from the defending side. Climax tagged down to just one HP. He's got a retreat and he's being pushed all the way back towards his spawn. Uzuma will do well to find one. And Team OG can sit back and play a little bit more defensively. Meanwhile, on the other hand, X9, they're going to be creeping forward. They've got the bomb and it looks like this time they've totally switched it up now. Going towards B with the bomb on their back. They're going to be creeping forward with it. But it's all going to be down to one of these picks. They need to find a way into this round. They've got a lot of angles to check. And they don't have a huge amount of map control. Climax though. He's going to find the frag onto Acronym. And bring it down to a 3 on 5. If it wasn't bad now. It is even worse for wear on the defending side. They've just picked up a second kill. Climax will get tagged. But this is a very strong setup from Team OG. That it is. That they've actually stayed alive within the first 20 seconds of the round. All of a sudden, they see themselves up as Pan goes down to Supma's AK with Climax also getting the kill there onto Zynga. And it's now in the hand of Kachi, who's been spotted by Fantasy. And that's going to be 4 3 in a round well needed here by OG. Absolutely. And it's. A big contrast in comparison to what we've seen earlier on. You know, we, we saw the first few rounds were very slow and methodical. And then it just all kicked off. There was total chaos. And now we're back to this maybe slightly slower pace of round. These teams are definitely trying to play mind games with each other, I think is fair to say. I would certainly say so, yes. They're... Uh... They are trying to, and like I said, we, I, I, I didn't expect to see a fast-paced game um, from these two. And it was always going to be more mind games with uh, picking early early frags where they could um, and really just try to get into, to, into places where they shouldn't. And uh, by the looks of things, OG are, are doing exactly that and just trying to snuff out X9 in the way that they would, exactly how they would want to. So... Um, Bomb is towards mid-house here with Acronym, and it does look like they're going to try and make their way in towards the A site. But Supman Fantasy having the lower ruins on lockdown with Rivera back tin. And Azuma sitting in towards Gerd, is going to be the standalone on A site as they all start making their way in. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag. They do realise someone is down underneath, but they don't want to commit to the fight knowing how exposed they might be. Mission is just to get the bomb planted at this point now, and OG realise it's going to be towards the A site. They're holding strong and playing very patiently, but they will have to make a move at some point. Uzuma has played an absolute blinder. He has held the lower section of the A bomb site itself for so long. The bomb has gone down and they can't afford to neglect his positioning. Supma will chime in now, gets a kill of his own, leaving Pan and Acronym all on their lonesome. Big kill from Pan and Uzuma is going to take out his counterpart. Now he's got 
Now hold on on his lonesome and he cannot do it. Bomb will be defused and that's a big round for OG. That puts them back at two. Good round there from OG and patience of a saint there from Azuma who was just sitting tight in towards that basement side. Picks himself up the frag and rewards himself with the bomb defusal as well. So... It's a good round. So let's look here at Akron. If he is looking towards the A side, hoping to see if he can catch someone. But it looks like his climax here. Moses Scope's going to open us up here. Taking down Blood through the wall onto Elbender's catch. He also goes down. Rivel the frag onto Akron him, as well as climax onto Zynga. And all of a sudden, one versus four. Pam will be all to do. As shots are going to be starting raining into the middle. They don't know exactly where he is, but there we go. The quickest round I think we've had all weaved in. And that's going to be 6 3 to OG. And a good, uh, a good foundation for them. Yeah, that was over in 30 seconds. That was a very, very quick round, and it was all off the back of Climax's opening shot. I think he even got it through the smoke. Doesn't matter. This man is going to take him out. If you give him an inch, he will take it. And that's another round for Team OG. Back to a three-round advantage. X9, they've shown brilliant signs of life throughout this initial half here in our opening map of this evening, but... At the end of the day, you do have to start putting rounds on the board at some point, and that is going to be their mission here going forward for the next couple. of Fantasy, a late nade will find Katye, leaving that just him four in, players. That found him in mid-house. He, he threw an attack nade of some description that landed through the window and into mid-house. But Fantasy is running absolute wild here. He's taken down Blood, Rivi onto Acronym, and they're playing so aggressive. It's 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 just not what x would have thought as Fantasy... He's going to sit tight towards A. Pans, like I mentioned, going to get that frag down there onto Ribbe. It's two versus four. It is indeed still quite a bit of movement needed for them to get onto the bomb site itself. Zynga is holding tight with this AK just outside the bomb site. He doesn't have the support of his teammate now, who's just gone down to Supme. And now AK, not really the weapon you'd want in a situation like this. He's got time against him and eventually will get pinched by Fantasy pushing out. They found him. And that's going to be another round four in the lead for Team OG. And so far, our predictions seem to be, I think, on point so far, Tiggs. I, I, absolutely. We are. We have, we've called it so far, and uh, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. But look, OG still need to try and sit try it. And, uh, but Blood, though, is, has opened himself up there onto Azuma, and that's going to be a... All the way down as Blood does get another kill as Rivet. His reign of terror is over as Rivet picks up the SMG and takes down Pan. As there seems to be bullets coming over, over towards Bricks. It looks like X9 trying to make some movements, but Climax shuts down Acronym. Two versus two situation. Looks like Zynga and Kaji do need to try to get the bomb down as a tickle does go down on towards site with Zynga a little bit further away from him on mid house, but OG are closing in. Yeah, this is nice movement here from Climax and River. River gave up the girder's position earlier on. He knew his teammate was nowhere there to support him. Decided to just flank the whole way back around. But do they realize that someone's in the mid-house? Yes, they do. Zynga gets dropped by the Desert Eagle. And now it's all on Katye in a one-on-two. This would be a big, big round for X9. And they've done it. 50% of the work done here. Taking out the first player. Climax in the 1v1. Oh, dear. It is going to be a game of cat and mouse. But Katye wins it out perfectly timed with the peak. And that's a big round for X9 to pick up. And a round that they desperately needed as well. I can't help but feel OG should have got closer together to do that. So we'll get the revenge frag. But it didn't end up happening. But I just want you to follow Acronym if you don't mind, Carl. Because he's actually making a good move to top A. And it looks like he's going to try and do a little bit of damage as he gets himself up there. But again, everybody seems to be a little bit slower in towards that A site. And he's got it on lock. I think he knows that there's no one in there at the moment. Still, OG have done themselves a favour, keeping five members up within the first 20 seconds, as it is X9 that do need to try to attack this A bomb site. It's a slow push that turned it, what well, that was a quick push. But again, just a Zuma sitting in deep on that A side and uh, doesn't want to give anything away at the moment by the looks of things, but X9 are slowly but surely making their way into the site as Climax has finally been spotted by the opposing scope who actually has the M4 now. And that's a... Uh, Kill there, sorry, acronym taking down Azuma. That's A side completely opened up, and I think that bomb's going to be made. And that bomb needs to get itself in pretty sharp. It's just Rivi does take down Zinger Blood and Fantasy get themselves on the board. Three versus two. Nice so far. Planted. 
All down to Fantasy, and he can get the job done. Acronym picking up what I think was four kills in that round. That was an absolutely incredible showing from the X9 scope. And he's been swapping onto the M4 here and there, and clearly he's got something in mind that we don't because it seems to be working out for him, Tiggs. Yeah, absolutely. And I think a lot of these scope players, if they feel like they're, they're not getting the most out of the scope, they do end up picking up the sort of the AK or the M4. Um, I know it's a preferred smoke of um, a, a preferred weapon of climax um, to, to, to play. So uh, yeah, it's 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 it, they needed those two rounds X9 to keep themselves well and truly in this matchup. And again, like I said, I don't think uh, OG have particularly run away with it, but uh, still plenty to do. Yeah, definitely not out of this one yet, but. 13 is the magic number, MR12, meaning first to 13 wins, and currently OG only five rounds away from it, from that match point. We will be, as we've said before, it is a best of five, so potentially four to five maps this evening, unless one of these teams can go all the way and take it three to zero. We'll have to wait and see, we've got plenty of COD4 ahead of us for this evening. Oh, and in the second half, Azuma is going to be the one to kick it off, this time taking out Blood, giving man advantage over to Team OG. What a wonderful reload shot that was there from Acronym as well, taking down the opposing scope and Climax. He's made it even now as Sutton is going to do everything he can to give his team the advantage as Zynga does, does fall. Oh, Sutton peeking around that corner. No fear as he finds himself with the third kill as well with River jumping in on the action. And that's a great round from OG. Patiently waiting. Get the frags. Get the round. 8-5. This is exactly what we wanted to see from OG early on, starting in strong and getting some momentum behind them, getting the wind at their back. That's exactly what they needed and obviously it's starting to show in the rounds. They've established that three round advantage yet again. They're showing no signs of stopping. Acronym has swapped it up, but Climax has got his number. He's there just a fraction of a second faster and it lands him another kill. He does go down, but his job is well and truly done, leaving it into the hands of Azuma, Fantasy and Sukme to hold on to round number 14. Blood, Pan and Katye, they'll be trying to do their best to hold them back. Bomb is still towards Elbend. They've got choices, plenty of time left on the clock now as well, but... The defenders will be spread even more thinly. This does favor, obviously, the attack inside. Oh, and here's a cheeky spot from Fantasy, but he's not been able to capitalize on it quite yet. And in the meantime, his teammates have gone down. He needs to find this kill quickly. Oh, Katye delayed him for just a moment longer. Shots with the AK now, not going to land, and he gets collapsed on for X9's sixth round. X9, that was a really, really good round from them, considering they went two down quite quickly as well. They done well to, to, to claw that one back. And uh, again, another round that they needed. They, they, they need to get themselves ahead at some point here if they stand any chance of winning this. Um, but they can't be doing it. Oh, and it's raining down with artillery fire as Sutton and River going to get the grenade kills on to catch him. Pan, and that's already put them at a disadvantage of the defense. And that's going to be three players left standing here for X9. And... Blood's going to try his very, very best here to make, the, make it a little bit more even as Fantasy does go down. But Climax there to revenge his fallen comrade. And that's it. It's four versus two. It looks like that bomb is still going to make its way towards middle. But I think the B call is probably going to come along. Because I think they've got a bit more control over that because there is still only two players left up for X9. It seems to be the case. Blood actually really unfortunate there. He seemed to have made some noise and I don't think that was intentional. Immediately capitalized on by Climax to give them the four on two. Now Akronim and Zynga spread equally apart across the map. Trying to hold on. Smoke's now going down. They have no idea where this bomb could be going. They can't afford to push for information. It will be creeping its way towards the A site. But that smoke alone is going to keep Akronim's attention for so much longer. They can't be sure that it's going to be going to either of the sides. Zynga's nade will come through, but the bomb is going to go down, and now Sutma has been activated as well. There's another kill for him. Climax will seal the deal. 9-6, to six and a very clean round from OG. Absolutely. Definitely a bit more of a slow pick and uh, pick and play round as River just had the bomb in hand and was just probably being shouted at, right, let's go B. No, we've just got one down here on A. Let's go towards A. Yeah. They made the right call in the end as it has ultimately ended up being a round win for them. But look at Sutner. Um, oh, he, oh, he was playing very, very aggressive there in towards mid-house. He was on the fence, but uh, he's dropped back down to a bit more a safer position as River does take down Zynga and Blood on to River now. Fantasy with a slow climber here. 
up towards the top. He has spotted one towards top A. That's going to be information that's going to be invaluable for his team. And hopefully someone's going to be watching that very, very soon. It looks like there's going to be two towards A site, two towards B. And it's going to be even on the split here as Pan finds the frag on to Climax and uh, only to make a decision what they're going to do is Akronin takes down Sutmi and catching it himself the plus 10 onto Azura and Fantasy. 9-7 the score and it's not over for the Greeks yet. Not quite yet. They're still clinging on to that last bit of life here as we get into what will be the last few rounds of our opening map. And that was great to see from Pan and Acronym. The, the bodyguard system, the buddy system in place there. He was there to support the scope and it paid off. Climax did the right call, made the moves to go towards them, but just couldn't land the shots. Not maybe expecting more people there, but Fantasy was expecting multiple here as he's maybe on for a third. Gonna continue from lower mid house he's just hunting for more players here this is a big big round for team og's smg just blood and zynga left the bomb making its way towards a they realize there's one all the way back in spawn they don't want to ignore him entirely We're expecting a push but i'm not sure who that is i believe it's blood yes it is he's going to retreat and move all the way back zynga meanwhile Moving into a better position to support his teammate. They know the bomb is making its way towards the A bomb site, but can't quite land the shots. River will go down. Now it's just Blood's Climax and Fantasy. Climax. Blood's, Blood is making his way towards Climax. I think he's expecting him. Oh, ho, ho, ho. A millisecond sooner, and that would have been the fragment. Fantasy is going to get Blood down in the back. As Zynga's now left Fantasy. Uh, sorry, Climax planted. into a one versus one situation. Scope versus AK. He's going to get himself in towards top A. As it looks like Zynga is crouching in. And trying to make the play for himself. He is. He's much closer than Climax realizes. Is he going to notice it in time? Just right above each other now. As soon as he taps that bomb, he's going to realize how close he is. He's hardly going to stick it. It's over halfway already, getting shot through the wall. And then Climax puts him down. Very, very close, but well played by the Swede. Pros don't fake. And Climax knew that he wasn't going to um, try and fake him out there. That's why he'd done the peek straight away. That's what I'm going to say anyway. So, looks like uh, another good round there from OG. Well deserved as Climax is going to open us up there onto Blood. And it's going to be a shot that went through uh, towards a site, Meaning that that is open as Sutme is taken down Pan. That's the SMG presence down for X9. As Sutme is now just going to try and bring some terror in towards Elben. Taking down Zynga. Not before he does get the kill onto Rive and Fantasy onto Kachi. But... Again, acronym straight there, back onto Climax and uh, Azuma Fantasy and Sutmay planted. just need to find the one Greek scope and they already know that he's going to be towards B side and they doesn't realise that Fantasy is as close as he is. So this is going to be a round where they're just going to be sitting tight just now. They're looking everywhere but where Acronym is at the moment. Sutmay seems to have done a full rotation from back A all the way in towards the middle. And a fantastic job that is as well, as Akronim does go down to Sutmez AK, and that was a great round from him as well. 11-7, getting closer towards that match point. Yeah, this is where they're going to start to feel the uh, the heat in the kitchen if you're over on the X9 side. Like, they're only two rounds away from losing map one in a very, very timely fashion. They've got to pull something out of the bag here on the defending side. So far, they haven't been able to string a couple of rounds together, Tiggs, and I think that's what's going against them. Are they going to be able to make a difference here? If Blood has anything to do about it, they will. He finds a big, big double kill, bringing it down to a three-on-three. -three. He's kept them in this round, despite going down himself. Pan, Acronym, and Zynga still remain, but they are, again, very spread out and just in the nick of time. Acronym will be able to find a kill with that Desert Eagle. It's just fantasy in Supme now. Supme has been having a great second half so far with the AK, but it's going to be cut short, leaving just the SMG alone. Fantasy in the 1v3. He's got the bomb on his back. He's got plenty of time. He's got options to move. Smoke will go down. This should give away a little bit of information here to Team X9. Just based off the trajectory of that smoke, they should know he's close to mid. An acronym nails the shot. There mustn't have been much showing there, but that's just the power of acronym on the scope. Lovely shot for an eighth round. 
Absolutely, and uh, look, they, again, they are needing these rounds. X9 are really trying to claw it back, but OG, hoping with their experience, they're going to be hoping that they're going to be able to continue to see this uh, see this map out here on back lot and uh, be a good first map to have. It's always going to be handy to have that advantage going into a five, um, best of five, so they're going to want to try and get in early as OG are looking to absolutely storm a site. Smokes and nades have gone out. Explosive. They realise that someone's there, but the bomb is down. Now they're up against the clock. The Greeks. Blood does get the kill there onto Fantasy. Four versus five still in favour of X9 as Blood does find his second kill there onto Azuma. But it looks like Climax is going to try his best to even up the odds here. Zinka goes down. Blood gets taken down there by Supman. Supman thinking about trying to tag for the walls. Back goes down. Supman's been found. But Supman, sorry, he's getting the kill there onto Akronim. And it looks like Pan is going to take down something all in the hands of Rive, who's slowly coming through. Doesn't hear the... Oh, it's the weapon switch has got him. Has he got enough time to get himself on towards the bomb site there? He's got a few seconds left. He has oh, only just be so close. got it. It's oh, got to be so close. He's only just got it. Explosives <laughs> diffused. 11 9 the score. And what a run by OG. The perfect play to get the bomb down. But man, X9 with a retake. Yeah, that was absolute chaos on the bomb site. There was just kills left, right, and center. Every single player firing on four cylinders. Pan and Blood will be taken out. Oh, no, actually, I, I tell a lie. Pan and Blood are going to find the kills. Take a fantasy and sup me out. Now, Singa's got one of his own. This is business end of map number one. Both teams know what's at stake here. Be a lovely map to pick up to start things off. Get your grand final going right. Put yourself in a little bit of breathing room and this is what we wanted to see from x9 azuma's the last player standing against three very angry x9 players they are coming into this with a renewed motivation to win these rounds they're now into double digits it's been a while tig since we could say that there was only one round between these two teams absolutely i think when it got to 3-3 three, three, i think that was ultimately the, uh, the, the the turning point for og but boy oh boy x9 are not gonna give this map up easily and that is proving difficult here for og who just can't seem to crack this nut of the greek so uh, hopefully um, they will come up with a, a, an ingenious plan to go and win the next round and put themselves on match point but the way x9 are playing so far I think that's going to be tough, but Azuma's going to do all he can to make sure he opens up there onto Pan. So, giving his team the advantage so far. Bomb still at spawn, however, and Blood making his way round towards his house, but quickly shut down for the revenge frag as Acronym is playing so slow on ruins, but he may meet an opponent before he knows it as Climax creeps up round the corner, takes him down, and it's now going to be 4 2 as Sutman knows that. It's more likely to be uh, better to go towards the A site, I would have thought, because um, I believe it's Azuma sitting in tight towards Ruins, but Katji is going to do everything he can to stop River raining down on him towards mid-house. It looks like the bomb is going to make its way in now. Bomb is going to have to go down. Smoke has been deployed. Zynga oh. finds him through the wall, though. Bomb denied. Now... This is looking much more winnable for X9. Katya needs to stay alive, but can't. The aggression from Azuma and Climax flanking all the way towards Connector. They will pick up their 12th round, and that's that's got to be a bit of a gut punch to X9. They've done so well to bring it back, but just couldn't quite get over that final hurdle. Absolutely, and match point here for OG, and they're going to smell that victory and they're going to have to do everything they possibly can for that, every tool in that toolkit to ensure that they can see this out. And I know X9 are going to be doing exactly the same to shut them down, but Pan aimlessly wandering out of mid and gets taken down by Fantasy as Zynga is going to take down River. That's uh, just a one AK down and one SG for the opposing teams. It's four versus four. A slow round now towards that A site as it looks like they're clustering up towards middle with two on B as Climax misses the shot there onto Akronim. Blood takes down Azuma and Zynga onto Supme and all of a sudden down the Fantasy who gets taken down by Katji. Wow, what a big round to uh, to be talking about now. 12-11. This could take oh, us yeah. our first overtime of the game. This is the one. They've dropped the ball on their very first chance to put this game to bed in regulation. Now Team OG have one more shot at it. Have they got something special planned here? Ooh, that was a lovely shot from Climax, but there's an instant response by Acronym River. We'll also take out Zynga. 
The man advantage over on the attacking side now as they've got four on three. Just Blood Cat Ye and Acronym to claw their way back into this round. Acronym is playing so passively. He can't afford to be aggressive here if he gives up his life. This round could be done and dusted before they even have a chance to play into a retake scenario. Climax. Oh, he's going to find Acronym as well. We didn't catch it, but that was a lovely shot from the Swede on the scope. Blood and Cat Ye now have a very, very tall order in order to save map number one for their team. Are they going to be up to the task? They're coming now to back each other up. Looks like Climax and Team OG are going to be making their way towards the B side this time. We've seen very few B palm plants in this map number one. And oh, it's just all falling apart. Climax will be the one to seal the deal. And that's map number one going the way of Team OG. Definitely feel the same way about this one. Well, I guess we're about to find out. And in the blink of an eye, X9 missing two players from their roster. OG, all five men still standing. And this time, Blood is going to be the one to respond. Oh, Climax getting the tag on the rusher. Coming all the way up close. He's going to get pushed down. Who's going to find who? Oh, there it is. There's the kill onto Blood. Leaving Zynga left all on his lonesome. In a one-on-four to win the opening round here for Team X9. And with the bomb down, that was going to be a very, very difficult play altogether. First round going the way of Team OG. And they're off to a good start here on the attacking side of Crash. Absolutely, and I don't think you can uh, ask for a better round than that. You, you, you know, your SMG picking up two frags, you're both picking up two frags. It's a, it's a good start, and again, it's happened exactly the same again as Climax and Azuma are opening up quickly here onto X9, but Pan with a revenge frag and catch you onto Supner, and Fantasy taking down his fallen comrade as Acronym is a very wise to Climax pushing down B long so quickly as Fantasy does also get the frag, and all of a sudden we are in a two versus one situation already as Fantasy overpicks on Acronym. And if you know Akronim, that is one thing you do not do. But Azuma's going to quickly shut him down. And that's going to be 2-0 in a fast round. Yeah, very, very quick round so far. We're not seeing this kind of patient, may maybe more methodical play that we saw on the previous map. Uh, both teams ready to go and raring to get into map number two here on Crash. Team OG starting off strong, but can't count X9 out of this one yet. And it's going to be yet another play towards the A side. Fantasy's going to be hopping over. From the pallet, Acronym takes out Azuma. That is going to be one less attacker available. And Katye also picking up Climax. That's a big kill now. OG only down to three players, but the bomb will be planted very early on. And Acronym finds another something. It gets dropped as he tries to fall back. Acronym is going to go off on another one. There he takes out River, leaving Fantasy all alone. A team kill for Acronym. He's just shooting fish in a barrel, including his own teammates. But when they win the round, that's not... There's no more you can ask of him. Explosives diffused. Absolutely. And a, a very good and a very strong hold there from X9. An acronym really putting X9 in his military backpack. Six frags to the good within the first three rounds. Again, what you ask for. But again... The first three rounds, we have seen an opening grenade kill onto X9. I think this is going to be the first one. We don't see somebody die. And uh, this could well be their round just because of that. And it is going to be Acronym winning the scope battle, taking down Climax. He does get himself shut down there. But looks like OG are not scared about getting themselves in towards A site. But uh, they are going to try and put up a bit of a fortress here. Pan and Blood sitting tight in towards A. And I can't see... Uh, of getting through this unless something miraculous happens. But uh, Azuma, as soon as I say that, takes down Pan as it looks like the fantasy is quickly making his way towards A site and Akronim is going to try and take down Rivet. Finds a frag onto him as fantasy shuts down catching the AK and gets a bit hungry but uh, ends up losing out as Akronim and Zynga take down fantasy and Azuma and Supme with a double kill of his own onto Blood and Zynga and all of a sudden a one versus one situation here with the box to go down. In the blink of an eye, just like that, we're down to Subme versus Acronym. Bomb yet to be planted. Both players, I'm not sure they're aware of each other's positions. Subme making his way very slowly in. He's going to tap it this time. 
Only 27 seconds left on the clock. Supna would have liked a little bit more time to play with here. Time is of the essence now as he's got to go for the plant eventually. Acronym creeping his way up the stairs. He's going to walk in right on top of him. And Supna unfortunately has to stick it. He has to take the 50-50 that he's not going to be pushed. And unfortunately for him, it's going to pay off in X9's favor. And we're all evened up again. Two to two. And we're getting ready to go into the mid game of this first half. And again, I think X9 have really learned what's going on here from uh, from OG, and they haven't died to the grenades again, which is good news. And again, OG making their way towards that A site again. They want to really get that heavy control in towards middle, take down whoever they can who wants to step out a line. And these Greeks are holding tight. They they don't want to give away any, anything easily, and which is probably why we haven't seen them push up so aggressively. But Supman takes one step out. And who's there to find him? Acronym, of course, as Blood does also get the kill onto River, who jumps on towards Pallet and the slow push there up the alley does take down Fantasy. Now, Acronym taking down Climax and the, two left in the one versus five as he finds the first frag there onto Cat Jin. It's still one versus four, but can't help but think they know exactly where this boy is, but he's not going to go down without a fight as Blood does go down to the hands of Azuma. Bomb is in blue, but I don't think they know that as Acronym misses the first shot, misses the second. As Azuma's now going to try with a little sneaky peek back there on the bomb site. Now, strange things have happened. He does get tagged with no frag, but unfortunately no bomb in hand. Eagle shot goes out, but Acronym to finish him off. 3-2 the score, and a good round here from X9. Could have been messy. And they ended up cleaning up anyway. Indeed, yeah. And uh, your props to Azuma there. He stayed a lot live. Or sorry, excuse me. He stayed alive for a lot longer than I think most people would have given him credit for. But he could have made that very, very difficult for X9. Did his uh, best job, but not quite there, unfortunately. And X9 will take the lead now as they go up around 3-2. to two. And early on, Katye will fall at the hands of Rivers AK. Fantasy also getting one. And Sopmi gets a quick kill onto Zynga. Five men still left alive now for Team OG as it's all on acronym, but no. Something with a second frag for the round and over in the blink of an eye. We're tied up again to 3-3. Three to three. Absolutely, and OG are not giving up this A push. And I can't help but feel there's just not enough going on from X9 trying to sort this out. However, I say this, both SMGs are up mid towards Villas and Arches. One frag to the good as Pan does take down Fantasy, but Azuma quickly shuts down Pan and I can't help but catch you. Oh boy, these Greeks have gone up mid, gone up B long, and they have found the goods here as Rivian Climax also do go down. Two versus four in favour of X9 as Summit have it all to do. Tag with no frags. Blood finds a frag onto Azuma, and Blood getting himself his second kill and taking down Sutmet. And another quick round, three versus four, and I can't help but feel those mid pushes are going to be really, really crucial here for X9 if they want to try and stop OG getting into A so fast. Yeah, it seemed like they realised just a moment too late that the mid push was coming through. They went straight through those smokes, and unfortunately, they needed a couple more seconds to react appropriately, but by that time, Team OG had just lost so many players. The round was pretty much done and dusted. OG now down a man very early on yet again at the hands of Acronym. Four players remain for Team OG, and Acronym has rotated all the way over to the other side. He's going to take out his counterpart in the form of Climax with that scope. Katye's also found a frag, leaving Azuma and Fantasy in a two-on-five. And look at this positioning. They're all towards the A bomb site. They've got no map control. It has to be a big performance here from the SMGs. As Azuma will go down, leaving Fantasy in a one on four. This would be a monumental round for him to pick up. He's tagged low already. They know exactly where he is. It's only a matter of time. Is he going to be able to pull something special out of the bag here, Tiggs? I'm not quite sure he's going to be up to the task, but he's somehow still alive. 40 seconds left on the clock, and he's going to get the bomb down eventually. Fantasy pushing in. Takes the SMG back out again. More shots giving away positions. He's tr he realizes there's someone here. He has to know. There's another player and he's found Katye. Now he's got the high ground. But oh. no. Zynga's AK is able to find his head. Must have been just a pixel. But that was very, very well played from Fantasy. He just had a little bit too much to do. That could have been classic Fantasy. But he gets shut down in the end. And well... What can you say? He's done his best in a bad situation, but look, we're on to the next round now. That one's already been lost. Climax is opening up there onto Acronym and Rive gets, sh gets the shutdown onto Zynga, and all of a sudden, next nine, a drop in 
All of the bodies are hitting the floor right now. It's Kachi and Pan are also going down as well. And Azuma finding blood. And wow, that was probably the quickest round we've got out since all evening. That's 5 4 the score. And what a round there by OG. Yeah, that was crazy. And, and just even going back to the round prior, that would have been vintage fantasy. But couldn't get over that last hurdle. Just a little bit too much to chew on. And now it is 5 to 4. X9 still maintain their advantage. But for just how long? We're starting to see a little bit of a revitalized OG turn up here. Climax picking up the very first frag of the round. And with a 5 on 4, it looks like things will start to slow down a little bit, Tiggs. Yeah, absolutely. But Climax wants to keep the momentum building. He picked himself up two frags here in this early round. As acronym is just going to try and wait for him. But as soon as the rotations start happening, Riv is already on the ball, taking down blood. It's a two versus four. Uh, sorry, two versus five situation. Nobody down here from OG. Nearly the complicated curse there as Climax finds it onto Acronym and Fantasy onto Zynga. And wow, there we go. We are all even at 5-5 five, five now. Cardinal, this is uh, turning into a good crash. Yeah, it is. It's Nick and nothing between these two teams. We're seeing yet again Climax is going to take this peak all the way down towards the B side, looking for Acronym to challenge him. But no, he's not going to be there. Instead, he's going to be on the opposite side of the map, taking out his teammate River. Submir responds with one frag of his own. And again, the bomb making its way towards the A site. The frags should have rained down by now. They should be able to cross relatively safely. Climax on the opposite side of the map. He's going to be pushing down along just to try and keep that connector position free. Acronym has taken out Fantasy in the meantime from the top of hardware. Another frag now for Acronym as he finds Climax. The perfect timing. He's brought this back down to a two on two. Acronym's found another leaving Sotme all alone. He's got the bomb but this is a very tough position to be in. No one's going to come up to challenge him. He doesn't want to face any of these two players at the same time. Sutma is in a very difficult position here. He's playing with fire with these peaks. And eventually he will go down. Huge round from Acronym to give X9 the lead again. Absolutely. And if we can just hit the tab button to see the scores. Acronym on 20 kills so far. This man is doing everything he can to keep his team going. And damn, Climax has done himself a favour getting that frag grenade kill onto him. But looks like his um, X9 compatriots are going to have to do a bit more now with it all going on. This Pan does get the frag onto Azuma as well as River from Zynga. Now, it's going to be a little bit slower from OG. They've lost themselves two players early door. They're not used to being in this situation. And a little bit of overpeaking there as Zynga does find the frag there onto something. Their blood taking down Fantasy and looky, looky. A climax left with it all to do. Spot one. Overpeak there from Zynga as he does get the frag onto him as well. Bombs in blue. Now, this is going to be an interesting pick here. Whether or not he's going to try and make his way towards that B site. He's favoured be long that he prefers to rush down. I think he's going to meet someone down there as Catchy is quite honestly waiting in anticipation for Climax to, to do something. But Blood's going to shut him down before he gets there. And 5-7, uh, your score in favour of the uh, the vending. Well, I think, sorry, was that uh, of X9, which is good to see. And, uh, well, very well played by them. And uh, who knows how this one's going to pan out now. Yeah, who knows what way this could go. 7-5 to five in favour of X9. But they are on what I think people might argue is the more difficult side here. Will Acronym be able to have as much impact now that his playground across those rooftops has been taken away from him? Climax gets a chance at it himself. But the other side of the story takes is imagine what this scoreline could look like if Acronym wasn't playing so well. This could be a very one-sided affair. He's kept his team in the lead single-handedly. But will he be able to keep him in the lead on the attacking side as he's now the last oh. man standing? He has taken out Zynga. Uh, he's taken out his teammate, actually. Yeah, what am I saying? He's managed I to. Just witnessed it. I literally. I, that was. I think it was a little bit of confusion. Um, he thought it was someone running into the crash site, and he's trying to make a mention for it now, taking down climax as he does go down. But River, that was a. Oh, that was dear. A, a little bit of a malfunction, shall we say, from acronym as he uh, just got maybe a bit trigger happy. Yeah, indeed. I, indeed, I think he could. Uh... Be trying a little bit too hard at this point and uh, i can see why he's really going for this one he's uh hungry for the victory after losing map one so narrowly x9 trying to come back with a vengeance into map number two but so far og 
clawing their way back into the game. There's only one round between these two, and now Climax, he's starting to be activated in lower hardware. Nades will come in late, and Kache, oh, he's found two. River has to take him out, but Kache's job is well and truly done, leaving Pan in a one-on-three with that SMG, trying to retrieve the bomb, and this is in a very precarious position, Tiggs. Yeah, absolutely. He's actually opted not to go for the bomb here, and I think probably wise to start with, just to see if he can find himself a pick, which he has, onto Azuma. That's one down here. It's going to be a close as Pan does find the frag there onto Fantasy. Now he knows where the bomb is. Now it's all up to a river, but interestingly, still not gone for the bomb yet. River doesn't want, quite want to give his position away. He does have the eagle in hand just for the uh, the sake of mo uh, mobility, trying to get around the map a little bit quicker. But Pan is checking behind him. He's checking everywhere. He's checking every single corner because you just never know where River's going to be. But River's going to sit tight, and this is interesting. Very, oh, I thought he was going to go out towards back A to try and make a run towards B, anticipating him a little bit closer. But River, not giving all his position away, but he knows exactly where he is now as the bomb is, in fact, going down. River's Explosives going to get into a better position on towards the crash site. But Pan's already made his move towards top A. Gets the deagle, gets the tag, but no frag. Now they know exactly where they are. And uh, it's going to be an absolute game of mind games now as River... Trying to fake some sound, different runs. Pan's already got himself set up in there towards the balcony, looking on towards the A-bomb side. I don't know if River's going to know he's there automatically. He's going to start coming round. But they haven't seen one another. Oh, fake dear. goes out. Oh, no. Oh, fake. Oh, Pan's going to play this out easily now. He's got the time on his side. River with it all to do. And Pan. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, Oh, dear. <laughs> Oh, oh dear. Destroyed. Talking about adding insult to injury, I thought the knife in the back was just going to seal it to assert uh, dominance, but if anything, he's made himself look like a fool. But he's won the round, however, and that is another round in favour of X9. Yeah, that was a, a masterclass in a 1v1 after getting the bomb down. Really, really well played. Kept his opponent guessing all the time. That will be an eighth round on the board now for Team X9 in a much better position than they were in our previous map number one, which ended 13-11. They do need to start continuing this form if they want to take map two to even us up to one apiece. Team OG down a man as X9 have the man advantage on the attacking side. They will have to spread their defending forces even more thinly across the map. Climax on the scope still available in the round, however, and he is positioned towards be long. He's hunting for more frags. It almost looks like he realizes there is still someone there, but they've now fallen back. They've retreated. Team X9 moving as a unit across the map. Sukme has to fall at the hands of Acronym Scope. And now the lone defender on the A bomb site. It has to be Azuma. He's got a very, very big job to do here. There's two players in close proximity. Climax is hunting down the third. It's all going to kick off here in just a moment as soon as that bomb gets tapped for the bomb plant but is Uzuma even gonna have time to it looks like there's a lot of movement above him they haven't quite committed to it yet as Kache moves back in towards the site checking each and every angle they know there has to be someone close but exactly how close is he gonna be Azuma spots him out he's dropped the bomb that could be the round he's almost found another pan flying in just about picks up that kill and now it's all on climax if he can deny the plant if he can deny this plant on the A side he will have done just enough but pan gets it down swapping to the A he can't find the kill and now Climax is in the one on two retake and it looks as if he knows someone's coming around the corner finds him onto Zynga and I don't think Pan's going to give him the benefit of the doubt and not peek him here as Climax oh that was nearly really well played here and I can't help but think that Pan is going to try and go for the peak gets the tag but not the frag he's going to jump out finish him off and that's going to be 9-6 to score and an unfortunate round there for OG but really well played from X9 and I can't help but feel Climax missing just that kill from the AK making his way towards bottom A when he was sitting at Link it's really the difference maker there but again a really good round there from X9 yeah back to back that's two clutches from Pan in a row now he's on his own playground here in the A bomb site. This is much more like it from X9. They're making this very competitive. 
And if Team OG are not careful, they could be facing elimination from Crash sooner rather than later. Acronym getting very ballsy with the no scope, doesn't quite land. And Fantasy picks up a kill. They're going to try and claw their way back into this round, but at this point, they need Team X9 to make a mistake. They've just been playing an absolute blinder here on Crash. And Katya and Zynga still Explosive remain Zynga, planted. trying to hold them back while his teammates get the bomb down. We're down to a two on two, but hey, Tiggs, this is winnable now for Team OG certainly is certainly is and look they need to start trying to make their way around but they're sticking together by the looks of things they're going to try and play this a, oh ho, 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 that is the kind of stuff you want to see the quick revenge frag um, as azuma does find it and he knows that this one's close towards bottom a's pan has got time on his side 20 seconds left on the clock as azuma is going to try to wait oh a millisecond more and he would have seen him crossing towards the bomb site and he hasn't really got time to be messing around here as pan is on towards the a site Five, Shots and Azuma comes round, gets the defuse as well. Oh, Azuma, you absolute beast! Picking himself up three frags and the win of that round. 9 7 the score, and the spam comes out as it's not even close. This could be a turning point here on Crash for Team OG. They might have had a little bit of a morale boost off the back of that. Azuma lost the 1v1 versus Pan in a very similar scenario earlier on. And he wins it out this time. Is there going to be renewed aggression from Team OG? And it looks like there might just be both teams trading kills with the frag grenades. Round now will start to slow down considerably. Zynga is carrying the bomb for X9 as Fantasy. He's going to chime in with one of his own, taking the round into his own hands falls back to hardware realizing there is another enemy very close by but just look at the minimap he's got so much support from his teammates he's totally covered off towards the backside and look at this angle are they gonna walk right on into him they might just do that pan it's him on the opposite side of the wall this is really and truly a game of cat and mouse but neither player wanting to totally commit to it climax scope still available and acronym is actually joined pan now on the top side here are they gonna go for a cheeky boost up onto the roof it looks like they will acronym has gotten himself into a very strong position now and i'm not sure team og know it he's about to be found out sooner rather than later as soon as one of these players spots him out that info will be relayed but pan on the other hand he's found fantasy he's won the game of cat and mouse for the attacking side acronym is yet to be spot he's gonna drop to sandbags the bomb is yet to be planted but there it is there's the kill the round has just fallen apart for OG. Now it's all on Azuma, the 1v3, and he's only good for one. The first kill goes his way, but Pan shuts him down. Wow. There you go, and X9's patience was a virtue, and they did get the round out of it there. And again, Acronym, is, he's having a game. He's having a real good game, and I can't help but feel that if X9 just done, a, you know, the couple of the other players have done a little bit. What is this that I'm witnessing right now? I've never seen this before in my life. Azuma gets the kill there onto Pan. And what peak is this into Wooden, wooden and Midday? You, you Greeks have been found out and I'm going to go onto a server <laughs> after this. What the hell? I've never seen anything like that in my life. They are waiting for someone to push into Wooden. But I think uh, that's enough of that. And um, everyone's going to look past this and be like, wow, I, no one else ever knew about that. But something does take down Catchy. X9. Got three players left. They had two people looking in towards A for that boost. So hopefully you would uh, say this is an OG round as it's certainly looking to try to be secured that way. His blood does ta get taken down by Fantasy and G as shots take get taken in towards Akronim and Zika also getting tagged as well. Fantasy does a little bit more for it. Climax has a tight there and towards getting the sun in the scope. And Zika does get himself tagged with a bit of an aggressive peak there for Fantasy in 10 8 score. What was that peak? Have you ever seen anything like that before? Uh, you know what? You know what? That's absolutely wild. Uh, I, I actually did see them do it earlier on and uh, and failed to mention it. But yeah, that's blown me away. Yeah, I mean, how old is this game at this point that people are still figuring out new angles, new places to peek from? That's crazy. That 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 could have been a complete ground changer if someone wanted to peek from Wooden or go into midday and just opened up the site for someone. But needless to say, it didn't, it didn't pay off. But worth thinking about but wow OG two men down River getting the third there onto acronym and look OG doing the work here as Pan and Zinger have it all to do now for the final part of this round
They do indeed, and they've got a very, very big job to do. If there ever was a time for them to pick one of these rounds up, it'd be right now. Put them ever closer to their first map victory. But OG are starting to come back into this one with that force. This is all off the back of Azuma's 1v1. They look like a totally different team in the last few rounds. The nades are landing, shots are connecting, and now they've brought us back to within one round, Tiggs. This could be a very influential round altogether. Absolutely, and look, I think, again, OG have opened it up here onto Akronim. Fantasy's taken down Pan, and look, OG are doing everything they possibly can right now to ensure that they are getting this round locked in, and this, this, this play at the moment, x just can't seem to find a way in, and, uh, you know, as soon, you can't help but feel as soon as Akronim dies, they're left in the hands of Single Blood and Catchy, and are they up to the challenge as much as their compatriot? Who knows? At the moment, they're not showing it as Fantasy does take down Blood, with Single getting taken down there by Climax. And look, Catchy left to his device. Uh, oh, no, he gets spotted in the spot, mate. Have been tagged. I'm sure he's going to get fragged any minute now. That's 10 10 to score. There it is, all evened up, right? at the ringer oh and we've had a timeout called by acronym now it's usually right on form but having only seven kills at the moment it's not impactful enough catch it eight kills not impactful enough however when you look at the og roster and the kill spread even though river's only got nine it's those important frags that he's picking up those those you know the, the beginning of the round kills oh, climax over the top of the bus then that's what we want to be seeing and that is not the start that x9 would have wanted all of a sudden they're in a bad place but they seem to have even it up quite quickly pan onto acronym sorry pan onto river and acronym onto fantasy as climax finds himself his third frag and that is the scope down and it's now a three versus two in favor of og and this is not the start x9 would have wanted Can't no be. there's only two ways this can go they're either gonna fall over and give this map away to o team og now or they are gonna come blazing out of the gates in the next round unless X9 can pull off something special here to take the 11th round. It's all evened up. Look at this from Blood. He's doing everything, expending every single bullet he's got. Smoke is down. They just need to get this bomb planted. Meanwhile, Climax and Supmay, you can't count them out of any Explosive round when these two planted. players are still alive. Oh, the frags actually go in each other's way. No, oh gee, they've just taken each other out. Climax aiming for the enemy. He's taken out his teammate and given Blood a chance. The bomb has also been planted. Climax has to push in with the SMG in hand. And time is of the essence. Remember, ladies and gents, he needs seven and a half seconds to defuse this bomb. Has he got enough time? He's also got to find Blood, who is going to be hiding somewhere on the site, but Climax doesn't have the time to check each and every angle. He's got him. Oh, he's got to make a mistake, and he does. He's going to get the defuse in as well. Climax opened up the round with a double kill, the easiest plus 10 of his life, and he's going to finish it out as well with the defuse. What a sick clutch there from Climax. That is exactly what OG would have wanted and exactly what X9 would not have wanted at this stage. And wow, that is, uh, that's going to be a sucker punch there for the X9 team. And uh, they're really going to have to show what they're worth now and, and really try to make amends for it as they are currently now down for the first time in this map, I believe. I think and you're at Bang Antics. I think that's the first time they've been overtaken and OG running with the momentum and the timeout seems to not have worked here as OG are just running amok on Crash right now as Pan does try his very best to try and silence that but River go take, goes and takes down Catch it. it's a four versus one situation and they know exactly where he is but Climax is going to roll around that corner get the frag 12-10 your score and Cardinal what's happened? Oh dear, I think uh, X9 are asking themselves the exact same question in Greek. We're at whatever Discord they're in, hanging out, and this game was in their reach. They had it in their back pocket, and they've just thrown it away. But at the same time, we've got to give credit to Team OG. They have come back into this one with serious aggression, and they've got the shots to back it up. You can have blind aggression and throw rounds away, but these guys are just playing with so much confidence that this could be the last round of the map. We're down to a three on three. Blood has brought it back from the brink with a kill of his own, but Climax is still available. Acronym now in blue. He's also trying to find any sort of angle. He knows that Climax 
Dynamax has got his number in the last few rounds and now he's got to prove it against his counterpart on the scope. AK being brought out. Look at this. They've just totally forgone the objectives. Acronym and Climax are just having a little 1v1 here in the corner towards the connector position. Oh, and he's dropped the nade on top of him. But Acronym doesn't go down. Azuma now in the 1v1. He won the last duel in the server towards the A site. Is he going to be up for it again against Acronym? The last time he found out Pan and found the kill. Will he be able to do it here versus the Greek scope? Yes, he will. And he's just like that. Won the map. That's 2-0 for Team OG. We'll have to wait and see. But we're kicking it off now into round number one. And just like that, down to Zynga and Pan for X9. And again, X9 starting slowly. OG, just casual as you like. Peeking where they want to, doing what they want to. And they find in the frags as Pandas tries to get the frag down onto Azuma, but Pandas is going to be taking it down. And look, they can't, with a team like this, they are a well oiled machine. X9 have really got to try and up the ante here. Maybe do some stuff that they're not used to doing, playing a little bit differently, because at the moment, they're playing right into the hands of OG. And that was a very, very quick round and a, a concise round as well. And it looks like acronym. He's going to do his best to get in towards that A site as he does get open it up with the frag grenade onto Azuma. So he's even scared to peek. This is the frag out towards the guy who was on the bin. So I don't know there's a second there. And here we go. It's now just a little bit slower as we do have uh, two people in towards A site. Two people on B. Yeah, it has started to slow down as these players settle into a rhythm here on strike. What could be our final map of this grand final? If OG have anything to say about it, that's I'm sure what they'd love. But X9, they're not out of this one yet. OG down a man here in round number two. Climax, Fantasy and River remain in order to bring this one back from the brink. The bomb is yet to go down. Still plenty of time left in the round and it seems like they're now making their way back towards Front Palms and walking through towards the A side. Fantasy will receive Katya and now that's the bomb been dropped. Fantasy's also found another kill before Zynga can find one of his own. River's gone down and Climax drops him as soon as he repeaks. The communication from Team OG is absolutely spot on, leaving Acronym to dance around the tower. And unfortunately for him, Climax and Fantasy pull that one out of the bag. Yeah, a, a great round. Fantasy has started off fantastically, and again, it's the usual subjects are really struggling here for X9 as Climax opens up onto Acronym, and again, X9 struggling as River gets the nade onto Blood, and they're running amok. They're running an absolute muck, but they're going to try and do everything they can as Catchy does go down to Fantasy, but not before Zinger and Pang get themselves two frags of their own. And it is a three versus two now in favor of OG. But my word, Fantasy has the bomb in mid shops as Azuma does take down Pan. And uh, it's all left up to Zynga now. Yeah, having found that bomb has really thrown a spanner in the works for X9. It cannot be retrieved. And each passing second Tiggs is just more and more time for OG to set up with this crossfire position. Look at it. This thing is all around. He's totally surrounded. And if the bullets don't get him, that car on fire surely will. That's three quick rounds for OG. They've started off absolutely stellar on map number three. They have... They really have an OG looking clinical, surgically taking apart X9, and the Greeks just don't look like they've got a plan. But it looks like Acronym is going to go down to a climax to grenade. So again, that's the that's the scope threat and the main man here for X9, or it has been for the last two, down as Blood does take down climax. So this is going to be a game that's completely open now as both scopes. So, moving in towards here, looks like it's going to be a bit of a slower start, but Azuma there to take down Zynga as they're trying to split and pick and trying to grab uh, players out of position, but we spoke about it. OG are not overextended unless they know that they can at the moment. They are being clinical. Blood's got himself into a bit of a situation here as he's got the kill. No frag on the guy on B as... I did have to stack two people up on this B site and they have just covered one another They're an absolute treat. And they know damn well that there's one there in towards that garage area of uh, of middle. But uh, yeah, I, 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 X9 are just you know, almost falling apart a little bit here and it's now three versus one. It is indeed, yeah. Three versus one and just like that for so long, 
X9 looked like they were in the round and they had a shot at it, but the hold has been so strong from Team OG, leaving it down to Fantasy and Suckman. Pan is tagged down to under 50 HP with the Desert Eagle in hand. Bomb has to be retrieved, and at this point, Team OG could just back off entirely, and they're not even going to allow him to do that much. There's no chance for a bomb plant here. He's just going to suicide, knowing the round is over. And that's four rounds for Team OG. Yeah, Tiggs, like we've seen now four full rounds here on strike and you said it best it's been absolutely surgical precision from team og whether it's the nades at the start of the round just this controlled aggression through mid fantasy's gonna go out there again this time he will get the nade on top of his head oh that's a lot of nades for x9 yes indeed and climax and Supme now they're the ones on the back foot they haven't been in this position before on strike not so far anyway we'll have to see how they react I think this was the plan all along, and I think this is what they really wanted to work with as Captain doesn't take down Climax. But that it's, this map is absolutely crucial when it comes down to opening frags, about getting yourselves into positions and working a bomb site. Now, the way that these two teams are playing at the moment, X9 aren't able to adapt to the way... Oh, that was unlucky. X9 aren't able to adapt to the way that... Um, uh, OG are playing this one and, uh, and the fact that they're just playing it a very simple sitting tight waiting for X9 to make the mistakes which they are making but again Akronim does get the frag onto Rive but Azuma finds it onto catch it's now four versus four and OG are locked in position that they are not going to be moving anywhere looks like X9 are going to try to work that more mid street Azuma is sitting tight towards single palm so I can't help but feel that it's going to be more of an A push. But OG oh are very, very far back. Climax, cheeky boy. We've only had three kills, but they've all been nay kills. But again, X9 playing slowly, almost playing into the hands of OG at the moment. And this is exactly the game that they want to play. Look how deep they're sitting. They're all sitting so deep. They're not over peaking. And they're just waiting for X9 to come in. Indeed. And Azuma's going to be the first one to contact them. He's in a very tough position to flush out, though, because you can't attack Azuma without exposing yourself to this firing squad down towards Palms. And look at this, the smoke is perfectly timed. It does evaporate, but now he's going to be activated. Acronym has to drop him immediately, and the kills start to come in from Fantasy. Takes out Blood, and we're down to a two-on-two. Two. Acronym and Zynga have to try and reposition. Zynga, where is he? He's all the way over towards the front entrance here by the front statue, and now... We've got Climax and Supma in a pretty tricky retake scenario. They have to expose themselves to someone, but Supma is just cracked the bomb site wide open with that AK shot. And now Zynga, he's going to be quivering in his boots here. There's players all around, and he goes for the rat tactic. He goes for the hidden plays, but unfortunately for him, Climax and Supma are just a little bit too thorough, and they will find him out. That's a fifth round for Team OG. And that is a mistake from Acronym. He hasn't made many, but that is a mistake. You are two versus two with the bomb down. Don't play for peaks. Is that, that round was solely going to be on Acronym sitting there on towards taps. And they've messed it up and ultimately has cost them the round. It's 5-1. And look, mentally, these guys are going to be really, really struggling to pull it back now. They're, they're, they're going to start thinking, well, what, what are we going to do? What, what's the play? What can we do? Who's the, who's the, who's the shot? Who's going to make this call now for X9 to finally start winning some rounds? Because they're playing very much the same that they have done in previous rounds, and it has not paid off for them so far. Rive does get the first frag onto Blood, but of course, Singer's there taking this ball of Comrade, but that slowed the round down even more so. And, you know, X X9 playing slow towards A, OG are very aware of that. And look at these positions, uh, positions now from OG. We've got Climax sitting on towards the taps wall. We've got Azuma watching front eight. We've got Sutmet also watching Kath with Fantasy, knowing full well that they're going to be slowly going towards A, just sitting tight on B. Climax getting the frag there onto Zynga, so that's his space that he now knows that he has now been spotted and they know exactly where they are. The call on Kath has already been made. And again, they're just shutting these guys out. They're, they're making these plays and making it very difficult for X9 to get in towards this box side. Time is of the essence here with 25 seconds left on the clock. They have to make a move sooner rather than later. 
they do have the man advantage if all they do is trade effectively they'll have taken this round and all of a sudden it's on fantasy he's in a one on three but a single well placed shot could deny the bomb plant and no pan shuts him down before he can enter the site that's good hold from the x9 roster but they they aren't making these rounds easy for themselves, Tiggs, and that's uh, a little bit worrying. They found a second one, they found form, but they need to capitalize on this momentum. That's the most oh. important thing here. Without a shadow of a doubt, honestly, it's, it's, these, it's that round there that it really does need to be the turning point for them. But again, it's a quick early, uh, a quick exchange. Early rounds here from OG back then on to X9 and it's 4 versus 4 immediately. Seems to be in the first 20 seconds at the moment. There is always one or two people dying in each roster, and they do just need to try and stay up. But let's see how this one pans out. But it looks like it's going to be more of a B orientated one. But Fantasy is going to do everything he can to shut that down and um, does get the frag there on to Pan. It's now three versus four. And the bomb is close in towards Flower, and it looks like uh, OG are very mindful that it's more of a B orientated push as they are going to try and take a few shots. And so they're going to sit tight, not, try not to make any mistakes, but that's a great frag from Captain Climax to get rid of the scope of Sutme. Does exactly the same for the other team. Got Acronym going down. It's now 3 versus 2 in favour of. And Sutme shutting down Zynga into a wonderful shot there as well. And they know exactly where this final player is residing as Sutme does get the tag, but no frag. And it looks like River's going to uh, finish him off. 6 2 to score. 6-2 indeed, and the momentum again shattered for Team X9. Just can't seem to gain any sort of foothold. They can't get any sort of consistency going here on strike. And we're now facing a 6-2 scoreline. More stuff from OG, but good names from Katye. We'll take River out. Sutme responds with one frag with that AK-47. And Blood responds with his own nade. And now Acronym has made his way into a very strong position altogether. Blood, oh, also look at that. Ran down Climax. Just no fear going straight in there. This leaves Fantasy and Izuma in a two on four with, you know, the majority of the re round remaining. Uh, and for the defensive side, they've got to sit back now. They can't afford to aggress. They can't afford to give anything up for free. But there's two quick frags. And now all of a sudden we're down to a two on two. There's no trade frag potential there. Azuma will drop eventually. Leaving Fantasy now to hold off these two remaining players. Have they got the bomb over on the X9 side? They don't, but doesn't matter. Zynga lands the shot. He's had a quiet game so far, but shots like that will win your rounds. Absolutely. And Fantasy knew where the bomb was. Um, I don't think he was expecting the X9 team to be with him so quickly, but then again... You've got to expect that these, uh, these Greeks are uh, uh, almost reeking of desperation now. So they are going to be doing a lot of unorthodox things to try to win themselves some rounds. And the aggressive play style is working for X9. And it, it, it won them um, uh, a round there that I think they need to speak. That is a lot more viable than they think. And although it might not be in their blood to do, but they do need to try to use that fast-paced SMG pushes a lot more because... Their SMGs are no smucks. They are quality SMGs, and it looks like Pan uses Deagle to get Climax down, and that's going to be the first frag that we see. And I think what we're now going to see now is X9 making their way in towards A site, knowing that's going to be a little bit more open. But the keeper of A site is still standing as Azuma is sitting in towards Single Palm, knows and can hear people pushing in around towards that back calf area. But again, a very slow push here from X9 using that middle of the street, knowing that Climax is down. They're now going to try to use that middle of the street to get themselves into A, which is exactly what they're doing. They have four people with the bomb on A site, on the statue. They're now making their way towards that site now. It's Blood trying to get the cross there. Doesn't know where Azuma is, and Azuma does get found there by Blood. And it looks like Pan is going to get the frag on to catch you, but Pan there onto Sup. There, there's bullets raining down. They know exactly where they are as the bomb and now gets picked up. It's going towards the site with only 18 seconds left on the clock. Mark is going to make his way down now. No nades going out. So you see is tagged and not fragged as Pan and Akrid finish up the round here. 4 6 and X9 looking better now. Yes, definitely. This is good signs of life from them. They've brought it back now to within two. We were looking at a 5-1 scoreline not too long ago, Tiggs, and this is looking like a much more closer affair altogether. Will they be able to keep it up, though? That's going to be the question on all our viewers at home minds for the remainder of this first half. Not many rounds left in it, but 
Still a chance for X9 to pull in front. And if Acronym's going to hit shots like that, they may just do so. Climax is going to be very disappointed that he didn't find that kill. Drop them to just a sliver of HP. But Acronym wins the fight and gives them an advantage to Team X9. How will OG respond here on the defensive side? Supma picks up Zynga as Acronym now moves to retrieve the bomb. He's also got an AK-47 in his hands as if this man wasn't scary enough. More shots raining out, but he is eventually dropped. That's a huge kill from Azuma with the SMG as well, of all things. Now, this is falling apart for X9. Just like that, Fantasy and River get kills of their own. And now the round is over. Just like that, it was looking so, so good. And X9, they, I, I dare say, they threw that one away. <sighs> I know, it, that, that's, uh, again, they're playing this slow picking rounds, but... Again, uh, when they, they're winning rounds when they're getting themselves into those sides, not so much taking um, the, uh, the the quick route. But it looks like X9 are going to be pushing really aggressively on this final round as the two SMGs are already out on towards the A site already with Akronin on cap. As Captain does get the frag onto Supnir, but Climax is going to do everything he can to shut him down as Akronin gets a frag onto that as well to River. Oh, it's absolute pandemonium going on there over on that A-site statue. There are kills going left, right and centre. I can't even keep up. But it looks as if, though, we've finally slowed ourselves down as X9 and one man to the good. But the bomb is in towards that A-site. Fantasy with a slow push round towards B, with Climax looking in towards that A-site, waiting on the cross. Patiently. Fantasy does get the frag onto Pan, however. Tries to even it up. Blood does not go down to the shot of Climax. Just needs to regenerate and is now going to go for the peak. He's going to play a little bit more aggressive. And like I said, things are getting a little bit desperate now. And I just don't think they know where the bomb is at the moment. Zynga trying to go and play to get the scope. They're working together to get this scope down as Blood's going to try and peek around the corner. Zynga gets the tag but not fragged. And as Climax does take down Zynga and Blood instantly getting the revenge frag onto his fallen teammate. And, uh, well... This is not a position Blood wants to be in right now. Fantasy's got Deagle out and knows that the bomb is in calf. Blood, though, goes to walk towards front A. That was a bit weird. Walks towards front A, but then goes in towards calf. Okay. And it looks as if he's going to try and make his way towards the bomb, and Fantasy does, in fact, hear him. Has the Deagle out. Is he going to go for the peak early doors? Explosives it like planted. It. And now the mind games begin. I wish this was catchy so I could say they're going to play a game of catchy and mouse, but unfortunately. <laughs> Needless to say, though, Fantasy gets the frag taken down blood. The brains gets, a, gets him the one up, and that's going to be the uh, eighth round Explosives going in favour of OG. That was odd, though, from, uh, from blood. He, he seemed to make his way towards Underlook, but come back on himself to go towards Path to get the bomb. Yeah, it was uh, maybe a little bit of indecision, you know, and we were obviously on the uh, the other side of the fence. We can't hear what the comms are and the information he's being given. Um, but nevertheless, he, he made as best of a, a chance at that as he could. And it was unfortunately just down to the 1v1. You could toss a coin at it at that point, but Fantasy will be the one to pick it up. And that gives them a very strong showing now to go into this second half. They will be on the attacking side. We're going to get to see some of this SMG aggression from players like Fantasy and Azuma. And here, Acronym will be able to sit back in that classic Stevie position with the scope in hand. Let's see how things kick off into the second half. Ooh, an opening shot not going the way of Fantasy. Gets caught on the jump and now Acronym's also got a kill onto Climax. Submay and River respond. They might be able to cling onto this round, but it's going to be close. They do have man advantage, but yet the bomb is to go down. Where are Zynga and Kache? They are starting to rotate into the site. Actually, Kache is much closer in. Zynga is going to be outside and he... Oh, tapping away. Picks up River. That's a really controlled burst to take him out. Lovely shot. Kache is tagged up from Palms, but they have a chance at this retake. 35 seconds left. Time is of the essence. Okay, well, by the looks of things, the uh, still 20 seconds left here on the clock, and uh, it's all for them to do. OG, though, seeing out another round, 9-4 the score. Yeah, this is um, this is where things start to get worrying. This is the, the largest round differential we've had all night long, especially if we, you know, consider just the after the halfway point on each map. This is a very, very dominant on strike from Team OG. 
Normally, I'd be getting excited from a double nade kill from one of the players, but you just can't count this OG roster out, even if they are down a couple of men. There it is. Look, Fantasy picking up that frag. They're going to collapse back and not over-aggress. Very, very disciplined play here from this OG roster. Just Climax, Fantasy, and something may left. They do have a considerable amount of map control to gain if they want to plant the bomb in this round. But at this point, they can afford to maybe play a little bit unorthodox you know they've got the rounds in hand they can switch it up a bit and try and throw a curveball at x9 if they want because at the end of the day if they lose one or two rounds trying something a bit unusual it's not going to matter in the grand scheme of things while x9 as you've said before tigs they are reeking of desperation right now mm, absolutely and that is so viable they're not really covering much between them either it's allowed og just to move side but as soon as I say that Sutmeg gets killed by the one that's sitting on towards Gary's wall I don't know that there's someone currently in cap either as Cap G is sitting or oh, so I should say lying down very very quietly as Inga does find the second frag there onto Climax and they know exactly where the final player is a big round here from Zinga as they make their way round that does in fact get the frag but look a really good start here from X9 but again losing two players immediately but then they go and just sit in patiently and get the frags but we're going to see OG playing a lot more aggressively and I just don't know whether or not X9 are going to be able to keep up but hopefully yeah. they do prove me wrong but uh, a good round and a, a well clutched out and seen out round by X9 yeah if we write off the beginning of the last round you know Team X9 managed to have a flawless 3v3 yeah, they did have a messy start. They lost two players early on. They might have gotten a little bit lucky with that double grenade kill. But in the three-on-three, -three, they didn't lose a single man. And that's really, really good to see. Like, see, can they build off the back of this momentum? Oh, it looks like they can. Just the kills raining in all around. Acronym was faster on the trigger versus Climax. Blood has found a double kill in this round, leaving Azuma all on his lonesome in a one-on-five. Katye will be the one to put him down. We're back to within three. And I want to see more of this. I wanted to see this X9 squad earlier on on strike. They haven't really brought enough to the table so far. They might be able to bring it back right at the buzzer though. They are going for a cash push again. OG are playing aggressive, going quickly. And this is exactly the APUS you would have wanted. This is the double grenade kill from Azuma and River. And that is an ACAN and SMG down into towards ASAP. And the smoke perfectly covering the site. As OG are just going to run straight in. And uh, Fantasy is already on the site. But Akronim's not going to go down without a fight. As he does take down Climax. As River does take down Pan as well. Zinger onto River. It's now all of a sudden in a two versus two situation. As soon as I say that, Fancy gets a kill there onto Acronym, and the bomb is going to go down. Sup, mate. Explosives. Going to do the honors. And now it is a one versus two situation, and Zynga, he's got it all to do, and Fantasy. He's got his W key well and truly down. He's making the rounds. are going to go all the way around. As Sutme spotted him towards bins there. He's going to stay tight and allow his compatriot to get the kill. And that is going to be a 10-6. The score and fantasy. He is popping off on strike. Yeah, I think this has become apparent the more and more we've seen. Like, just looking at the scoreboard, Fantasy has 20 frags under his belt so far here on this map. And, you know, we've only seen 16 full rounds so far. This is a crazy performance from an SMG in particular. Meanwhile, everyone on Team OG, what's become apparent is just their level of communication. We saw Sukme spotting out the last player in the round, but he didn't peek. He didn't go for the glory kill. Just let his teammate mop it up and secured the round. And... Kills, obviously, you know, they'll get you those spots on the scoreboard, but it's the rounds that'll win you games, and those are most important. Team OG here in round number 17 already have the man advantage. His pan has gone down very early on. I'm not quite sure if that was to a nade or to someone's rifle, but nevertheless, he will be watching this one from the sidelines as Team OG make their decisions. Acronym, though, big kill. That is a very important kill to shut down that aggression and keep Team OG modest as we get into the mid-round. Absolutely, and I think with everything that's going on at the moment, um, it's 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 exactly what OG would have wanted, but these are the kills that they need. X9 onto Azuma, and the bomb's in towards that, o uh, that underlook area, so they can rotate, but Fantasy is a man on a mission right now. He does take down blood. I'm not sure they know that Cat is sitting on site right now, but they do smoke up the cross. 
as Fantasy is checking all of his corners and gets the shot, and then it's Climax who's going to get the frag, and the bomb is going to go down. I don't know whether or not we've seen a grenade go out. Oh. We certainly have, and Zynga does get the kill, and it's going to be 10-7, and a good uh, methodical round there from X9. We need more of them. Yes, and very well played for, I uh, was it Katye, I think, that was on the, the bomb site itself. Without that position, that could have been a done deal for Team OG. Fantasy, off the back of a couple of quick kills, really pulled that back in their favour. And they're going to go for a very similar setup here again. Climax and Fantasy now into Cap very early on. They're being aggressed by another player, but oh, Blood is going to be the one to win that out. And now Climax has no one there to defend him. He doesn't need it, though. Deagle in hand makes the correct call and takes him out. Azuma's also picked up Katye in the meantime, an acronym dancing around looking for targets through this smoke, but nobody willing to peek him right now. They have to find a mistake from Team OG to get back into this one. What's up, my eyes in the sky? No nades to rain in. That's going to be a bomb planted. And now the onus is on Team X9 to make a move here. The longer they leave it, the more Team OG are going to get rooted into this A site. And there it is. Look at all these kills just in the blink of an eye. That's a big round for them. And now they're within two of this grand final. And, uh, I mean, look, X9 have stepped up a little bit more. So they've kind of got themselves in the third gear. But, boy, they are just... They're falling at the hands of OG at the minute, and it's, it's just them sitting tight. And wow, here we go then. X9 with the start. They would have absolutely dreamed for stopping that push, and something's going to do everything he can to try and lock it in and get himself in towards a site still. And he's he's not scared. He's going in aggressively, and it looks like uh, Pan's going to get the frag down there onto him. And all of a sudden, four versus two, and that is just the start X9 would have wanted. And you would have had that chat at the beginning of last round they're playing aggressive let's start nading, nading double nading in towards street let's start trying to get into places a little bit quicker and they have done and that's what the round has in fact worked out for them at, at the moment as they stand uh, one player up but uh, don't dis let's, not dis uh, let's not count out Azuma and River just now as Azuma's going to do everything he can to try and get himself on towards that A site as soon as possible yeah, River is in a very one-and-done position. As soon as he's spotted out, he's most likely going to go down. How much impact can he have? And none is the answer. 11-8. to eight. Team X9 not quite out of this one yet, but they are starting to run out of mistakes that they're going to be able to make as we get into the business end of what could be our final map. Team OG are in a very similar position to X9 from Crash, and we saw what happened in that scenario where they weren't able to hang on to their lead. Are we going to see a repeat of this one here with the shoe on the other foot? Very slow start to round number 20. As both teams not willing to give an inch. Nobody wants to go down for free, but what a shot from Climax with that scope onto Pan. Moving through the air, it was a wonderful shot, and he's cracked open the round with the first kill. Four men still remaining for Team X9 as the round will slow down yet again. Both teams know what's at stake here. Neither of them want to give this one up. This is a crucial round. If OG pick it up, they will be on map and series and grand final point. And they'll have plenty of opportunities to close this one out in regulation. But X9, they are slowly but surely getting pushed onto the back foot. Fantasy yet again. There's two kills for four this wow. round. That's a huge play here from the UK SM. MG Cache is the last remaining bastion of defense here for Team X9, and they're nowhere near the site. Just look at the minimap. They've swarmed the A site. The bomb has gone down. Takes this round is done and dusted. Oh, without a doubt. And Climax just is going to finish us off here and put us down here in towards match point. And wow, Fantasy just unlocking that B site, being an absolute menace causing X9 some real issues on strike and I did say this that X9's strongest map is not this one and it is proving to be right and they are struggling to contain fantasy struggling to contain OG and it looks like we could be on our way to a free new whitewash in favour of OG but no one's gone down so far, but as soon as I say that, it's the commentator's curse. As Catchy just get taken down there by River, and it looks as if now they're going to try and do a bit more of a split and B push. And try to see if they can get themselves into some areas where uh, X9 aren't, aren't suspecting them to be. But again, just some shots being rattled off there from Acronym, but not connected with anything so far. And he's going to have to get himself a lot deeper 
as again, OG are playing very, very slow, very concise, making sure there is nobody to shoot him in the back. But in doing so, Zynga is the person who's going to take down Azuma. But they do know that there's someone in towards that uh, lower jump area. So now they have to be mindful of that. Pan and Blood sticking tight on A just in case of the rotates. As late smokes are starting to come in, trying to set some confusion, try to see if we can get people into some different positions. As Akronim does spot one towards that B flower. Unfortunately, doesn't connect with the shot again as Zynga is trying to put X9 on his back. And that is his reign of terror over as Sapne gets the headshot onto him. And Sapne finding a shot there onto Akronim now. Three versus two situation as it looks like OG are going to make themselves on... Well, trying to get themselves on towards that B bomb site as Sapne does go for the first fake as Blood takes a few shots. Doesn't get the frag, but he does kill Fantasy as Pan does find Rivet. And all of a sudden, Sapne on one versus two. And X9 put up the fortress and it's Pan and Blood are going to see us out here giving the lifeline to X9. Wow. That was a knife edge if there ever was one. There was a battle between Climax and Acronym for the best bones of that round and Zynga was the one to put an end to it. And then I thought just at the brink of defeat that Supme had pulled it back in their favor but Fantasy couldn't find the last defender on the B bomb site. And now we are into... What could be a last round for this one again, but X9 are not out of it. They need that renewed motivation. They need the fire in their belly coming into this round in order to not lose it out. And they may have just done that. Climax will find two kills. Oh, I, excuse me. Azuma's the one found, found one of those kills, I should say. And we're down to a three on three, but... Zynga, Pan, and Acronym still available. Zynga's been really starting to come into it in the last couple of rounds here. Climax picks him up, but Acronym can't trade the kill back, giving control of that site to Team OG. But now, all of a sudden, Climax does get left on his own. The bomb is nowhere near, and he's going to have to expose himself to Underlook in order to retrieve it. His best bet here is to try and find one of these two remaining players first. Bring it down to a one-on-one -on -one before he really has to commit to the round. But look at this position from Acronym. Is he going to check it? I'm not quite sure he will. He's positioned perfectly and there it is. One shot is all he needed. And that's all he was going to get. Puts the round to bed. And now that's two rounds that Team OG have not been able to put this away, Tiggs. I oh, know. And... A little bit of overpeaking has stepped in, it's crept in, and it shouldn't have happened, and as ultimately have lost OG the round, uh, made him just a little bit, uh, put him a little bit on edge, I would say. But here we go, OG with the opening frag as Climax also found, that uh, also finds Pan with the Deagle as well, and this is not the start that X9 would have wanted as the third has gone down in Zynga. Oh no, X9, acronym's gone down, it's all in the hands of Blood, and I think this is going to be the final round that we are going to be casting this evening, Cardinal, because... I can't see Blood killing five of these OG players because they are just going to clinically, surgically get this guy killed. And here we are. Sutton gets the final kill with the grand final here in the Winter League for the FES Challenge. And that is 13-10, your score. And X9 haven't hung around for long. And they are three nil winners in this grand final. What a game.